Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to try to put together everything we've learned and do another one of those summaries and make a program that shows and exercises what we've already learned. I'm a physician by trade, so um, I chose to do the Car Framingham Cardiovascular Risk Calculator. What this is, is it allows for people to input some values, known values about a person's health and calculate their 10-year risk of having a heart attack or stroke. So in the next 10 years, if say for example your risk of having a heart attack was 10%, that means out of 10 people, one of them would have a heart attack in the next 10 years and 99 of them would not. Okay, So um, this is basically a known equation, equation in medicine. The equation um, is broken down by genders and basically here it is right here. Notice we had to import Dart Math, and therefore we're using the power, and we're use and we're using the constant E, and risk factor. Risk factor is calculated by, right here. This is the equation. All right. Now, what are the factors that go into it? We already imported Dart the um, Dart Math. We need the cholesterol. I'm just um uh, attributing arbitrary values here okay so these I'm just initializing it with the value 210 your cholesterol whatever it is put it inside of there systolic blood pressure these are the factors that we need to know uh, for the record the um, blood pressure is measured by a top number and a bottom number okay the top number is the systolic blood pressure bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure it, it the top number will always be higher because the top number the systolic is when the heart is pumping and the diastolic is when the heart is relaxing so that's why it is a smaller number I bet you didn't think you'd get a uh, medical lecture here huh um, anyway age in years HDL high density lipoprotein it is what we call the good cholesterol the higher it is the better average is 40 in men 50 in women um, medications um, are you taking medications for blood pressure? Um, just keep in mind that um, if you have, for example, a blood pressure of 140, you clone you, okay, and you have two of you. One of you has blood pressure 140 over 90. The other has 140 over 90 but is taking medications. If they weren't taking medication, their blood pressure would be 170 over 90, okay? So both of you have blood pressure 140 over 90. The person not taking medication has a lower risk of heart attack okay so the person taking medication even though the blood pressure is good their blood pressure their heart risk of heart attack and stroke is still higher than if your blood pressure was normal on no medication now remember if your blood pressure was 170 here and you got it down to 140 you would definitely benefit you would have less of a heart risk of heart attack and stroke but not compared to somebody off of medication so just wanted to make that clear do you have diabetes? If tr true or false, um, smoking, true or false. Here I chose to do a bool for gender because you're going to be male or female, the overwhelming majority of times, and I just simply said true would be male, false would be female. This is the actual uh, actual importance of of commenting. So if you look back on this a year from now and you say bool true, what is it? I don't even remember what that's supposed to mean. You can just look at the comments that say true equals male, false equals female because it's the gender. Okay, so in the importance of making an accurate variable name as well as commenting itself. Okay, these comments aren't necessary. I just put that in there for um, our sake of this particular program. So now we're going to make a class. We're going to need this instance variable, risk, which is the only instance variable we're going to need. Okay, All of these other values, these variables, we are losing them within the lexical scope. right? Because as soon as you get out of the lexical scope into here, you lose the value. So we cannot access it, access it out of the class because the getters don't go inside of these particular brackets or even these parentheses. Okay? But we don't need it because we've already known these values here and we ax we put the input the values right through here. Right? So this is the class constructor. There's the class, class constructor, and we're gonna put these arguments, I mean parameters, we could put these parameters inside of here. Cholesterol, age, systolic blood pressure, HDL, medications, 
and for and so on. So I just made an if else statement inside of here, and it's going to say um, there are there are constants in the Framingham equation, but the constants depend upon some of these values. If a person has diabetes, so if a person has diabetes, where's the equation? Right here, you're going to have that as part of this particular risk factor equation that's used to calculate the overall risk. Okay, so what is this constant? If he has diabetes, it's going to be this value. If no diabetes, this value. Remember this again? This is the if else statement in one line. So if they have, is diabetes true? Question mark. It will equal this value. Else, if it's false, which is the only other option, it will equal zero. So this DM, if they, they don't have diabetes, will equal zero right here. If it is true, they have diabetes, this will be 0 0.57367 right here. Same thing with smoke. Do they smoke? Is it true or false? If it's true, it'll equal this value. Else, it'll equal this value. So this right here, <clears throat> this variable will take on the value of either one of these depending on what this shows right up here. Okay? Same thing. It's a it's a um, constant d depending upon whether they smoke or not. And it goes down. Same thing else if this is female. Okay, commenting it itself. So gender true, male, false, female. We have the same thing. The constants are a little bit different. Same exact equation. All right. And finally, we have the value of risk, which is the risk factor. And we're going to multiply it by 10, round it, and divide by 10. So it'll be a percentage with one decimal point. Then we go up to the top and say, OK, Framingham, that's the type. Answer is the variable. Equals new Framingham, and we can introduce per, um, arguments into it, right? Here are the values which are listed up here. And then you print your 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease is answer.risk. So again, you're calling the object dot value of the instance variable, which is the only one we can really access. OK? Let's see what it shows. So this particular person, 10-year risk of cardiovascular disease is 50.8%. OK? If you change it to female, for example, right here, the number lowers a little bit, pretty much cuts it in half, 25%. All right? Few things. Now, you might be asking, wait a minute. Why are you using a class? If you're only using or returning one value, can't you use a function? And the answer is yes. This is only one function. The class is not particularly complicated. You probably should use a function. OK? Easy enough. Already there. OK? This is almost copying and pasting, only we don't have the um, instance variable. We don't need it because this is not a class. This is just a function. OK? Everything else is almost the same except right here. Right here, that's the same. We return a value, and we return a value. So we either return a value for males or return a value for females. But regardless, it will always be, you will always return a double. Same exact thing. Same thing right here. Only this time, we're, we're calling a function. Double A, the f right here, double, double. A equals Framingham. We're calling this function print this variable because the variable has the value of the function itself. This particular person, 14.7%. I think these values are different. Let's just put this true. So this guy has a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 25.1, and we can always put percent to make it look a little better. Okay. So any time you have returned just one value, you probably should be using a function. If you have multiple other characteristics inside of here, feel free to use, uh, again, instance variables, other bits of data, feel free to use a class. 
But you might think at this point in time, wait a minute, this is not overtly new. The only thing new we did was import Dart, right? So let's use what we've learned in the past few videos. Now let's import Dart IO, okay? Wouldn't it be nice, instead of import it having the values here ahead of time, being able to input it in real time at runtime? So you don't know what the values are now, but as soon as you run the program, you will be asked the values. Let's try this, and then we'll go over it, okay? What is your gender? Male. Are you taking medications for blood pressure? Yes. Do you have diabetes? No. Do you smoke? No. What is your cholesterol? 250. What is your systolic blood pressure? 150. What is your age? Since we're on 50s, what's your HDL? 50. Your 10 year risk of cardiovascular disease is 18.7%. So we can actually run the program and input things themselves. So isn't that nice? <clears throat> One step ahead. So one step forward, I mean. So let's look at the code now. Print, what is your gender, male or female? String, gender string equals STDIN, remember, from Dart.io, standard in, read line sync, bool, gender, remember, bool, gender, gets inserted into right here. By the way, I should probably be doing that to make it easier to read. There too. Okay, um, bool gender, gender, does gender string equals this string, male, if true, then gender equals true, else equals false. Now, if you're going to look at this code, say, wait a minute, there are some big logical potential flaws here. Hang on to your thoughts. We'll go over that in the next video. We're just going to just use what we learned, and then we'll clean it up a little bit in the future, okay? Same thing. Are you taking medications? Yes or no. Meds equals true if this is true. False if this is not true. So if you type in Y, it is true. Anything else you type in, it's going to be false. Same thing, same thing. <clears throat> now we're going to the numbers. Cholesterol string equals read line sync. Remember, this is a string though. We have to remember Dart is strongly typed, so anything that's a string will always be a string. You have to specifically tell Dart to convert it into an integer if it's going to be an integer, okay? It's, it's never going to do it for you. You got to do it. So we'll get this string int.parse. I don't know if we've went through that before. I think we did. int.parse is basically just one of the ways to convert this string into a number itself. So if you type in a number, it converts it into the number integer cholesterol, not just the text. Same thing with the rest of the values right inside here. Then you're able to utilize this information as integers, insert it inside of here, and run the actual program itself. Here, oh, interesting. Here I used it as a class. Why? I think what I did was I just copied it and pasted it into a new program itself. So I, I didn't have to do any retyping or anything like that. So this is what we've learned. We've just learned how to type new things from Dart IO. From Dart Math, we need you learn to use different um, um, constants, first of all, which are instance variables to these libraries. We've learned new methods like power or functions. And we were able to make it into a program to calculate your 10-year cardiovascular risk. Now, again, there's a lot of problems with this program. Let's go over them next video and, and see if we can break it down and improve upon this and basically debug it. Okay, thanks.